This sculpture tutorial will teach you how to make a paper mache action figure. All you need is tin foil, newspaper, Elmer's glue, and water. And you can make an awesome figure sculpture that expresses emotion. All tin foil is 12 inches in width. Take a ruler and measure at the halfway point, which is the six inch mark widthwise. Then fold your tin foil in half to find the center. You could measure, but why not fold it? Take your ruler and draw a long vertical line from the center and the six inch mark to divide it into two even sections. These are gonna be your legs. Divide the top into thirds. So you do the math. If you want three even sections, put a tick mark at the four and the eight inch mark, and then you're gonna draw two shorter verticals from the top. Don't go all the way to the center. This is gonna be your arms and your head. Carefully with your scissors, cut your first vertical line. Repeat the steps at the top to reveal your Lego block man. Carefully squeeze in the center, that's your waist, and you should have a starfish looking piece of tin foil. Gently squeeze the two bottom sections to make your legs and gently squash the top to make a head. Don't wanna make it too small, so keep it pretty loose. The arms, same technique, and don't overwork it because once you squeeze the life out of tin foil, it's really hard to get it back to a larger consistency. Right now, it's gonna kinda look like a boring stick man, but this is what it's supposed to look like at this stage. Gently start sculpting your details. Um, my students look at images of a human proportion, so we know like the waist is your center point, your legs up to your hip is about half of the body, um, and your arms, when you fold them down, should go to mid thigh, not all the way to your knee and not past your, or up higher than your belly button. Um, play around before poses with just your sculpture being straight arms and legs down so that you can measure the proportion. And proportion is size relationships. Once you're pretty happy with your size relationships, it's time to start playing around with your pose and your expression. What is your sculpture doing? What expression do you want your sculpture to show? What emotion is it feeling? What story is it telling? These are questions that you can think about as you're sculpting and as you're working your tinfoil to be the figure that you would like. It's important with figure sculptures that your body bends in the way that a human body could actually bend. So you would want your knee, the leg would be like where your knee is at the halfway point, and it wouldn't be somewhere random. Once you're happy with the proportion and you're getting happy with the pose, it's time to attach it to a base. I have found that staples and um, thick cardboard work really well, and your base should not be awkwardly too big for your sculpture, but it should be large enough, as you can see, that just a stapler or two, it should be able to stand on its own. My sculpture is just standing on one leg. Maybe yours is kneeling or sitting. Maybe yours has both feet down. Paper mache. My paper mache paste is simply Elmer's glue and water. I like to take all my jewelry off because if I spill it on myself, it is a gluey mess. You will use small pieces of newspaper and you'll rip them into small pieces as you work. Small handheld piece, dip it in your paper mache paste and then squeeze off the extra. We're gonna start with the easiest surface, which is the flat cardboard base. Cardboard, just like newspaper, is very absorbent, so it just sticks right on there. You're gonna notice right away the tin foil does the exact opposite. Wrap your edges like a Christmas present so it has a nice clean edge and you only need one layer. It's important at this step to squeeze off any of the extra water and glue. The cardboard can become really heavy and soggy and the base is really important so that your sculpture stands up nice and straight. If the base is the easy part, the foot and the leg are the challenge. This is key because a sculpture needs to be able to have balance and to stand, in my example, on one foot. Every sculpture is different and your challenge will be finding the balance with the pose that you have selected. One foot is more challenging than two, but as long as you have a really good ankle and a really good support to the base, it should be just fine as it dries. 
I call this stage the boot. I don't want a really clunky ankle where it looks like he is stepping in a concrete block. I do want like a small thin ankle and I made my foot disappear and I'm going to show you how to go back and do that. Another thing to notice is tin foil rejects water. So it is not going to want to cling to the glue and water like your cardboard did but it will to the newspaper. So it's all about overlapping your layers several times so the newspaper sticks to the newspaper and you work your way up. I am putting a second wrap around layer on my ankle and I'm pressing it to the tin foil so it's nice and delicate, but so the boot or the foot part of my sculpture is gonna be really secure to my base. Since my foot disappeared when I covered my base with newspaper, I'm gonna do a foot implant. And I just ball up some newspaper and set it where I wanted my foot to be. And it's not gonna stick by itself, so then I do one more layer wrapping over the whole thing. I'm gonna squeeze all the way around the edges so it doesn't look like my sculpture broke its leg and it's in a clunky cast. I want it to have a natural proportional foot to what it had before I covered it up. Voila, foot implant. Now that I have a secure base, I'm gonna go up my leg slowly, overlapping with long strips of newspaper. If your sculpture has both legs on the ground, I recommend doing both legs at the same time, but because mine is hanging out to the side, I don't want it to cause my sculpture to be out of balance. Now for the really fun and awkward diaper phase. Your Batman bikini. Remember the pelvic girdle that I hate saying? Your Batman bikini is where both of your legs connect to your torso. You're gonna take a longer, thicker strip of newspaper and you're gonna diaper your sculpture. If your newspaper tears or is the wrong side, try, try again. You're gonna have to do this on both sides. So take another longer, thicker piece and wrap it around the other leg, connecting it to your rear end on your other side. At this point, you're well aware that the tin foil does not want to stick to the paper. So if you have to do multiple layers or if you have to really press the two layers into each other, don't be scared to kind of get in there and squeeze the Batman bikini and squeeze the upper thigh until it's in the right position. It's a little awkward, but it's just what you gotta do. Now that you've put a diaper on your sculpture, things you never thought you'd hear your art teacher say, it's time to move up your torso. If you have two legs on the ground, both of your legs are done, I'm gonna wait until day two to do my unbalanced leg. Your torso is a thicker shape than your leg, so you wanna start tearing longer, slightly thicker pieces that you can wrap all the way around, almost like a really thick belt. The next step I like to call the Chewbacca sash. So from the Star Wars movie, Chewie wears that sash over one shoulder and across the opposite hip. It's a little thicker, but you get the idea. And you wanna squeeze it into the armpit and into the waist so it doesn't look like he's wearing an oversized t-shirt. You're gonna repeat this and you're gonna cross over on the other side and it's gonna look like your sculpture is wearing a tank top. crisscross over and squeeze so it is very form-fitting. When this dries, you want it to be form-fitting to the tinfoil and not loosey-goosey. This technique can be really heavy. Newspaper, water, glue, and balance is so important in a sculpture. My rule is I never do the head and the foot in the same day because I don't want it to be top heavy. So I have found a great stopping point and once my glue and water dry and the water evaporates, my sculpture is gonna be really light. I can go back once it's dry and I can add the head, the arms, and anything that's a little unbalanced and we'll talk about touch-ups too. My sculpture is completely dry. It has sat out overnight 
and it's much lighter it's really balanced and all the glue and water have dried and been absorbed now that you have done the torso it's time for the head and i want you to think about a lollipop and how when you unwrap a like charms blow pop for example it has a really big square wrapper you're going to do the same size shape for your head um not every piece fits perfectly so i would cut out or tear a square and it needs to wrap all the way around the head and to the neck then i'm going to take a piece and i call this the scarf piece and i use this piece to give it a defined neck and so i know that the headpiece is really stuck on there if it looks like you draped like a big bag over the head of your sculpture i would maybe take the pieces off or overlap the way i'm doing um, it's never gonna be perfectly smooth, but if you get the right shape and a large enough piece, it should look pretty good once you wrap the scarf piece around. Now the arms are easy. It's just like the legs, except for they are not offering any support, so it's not as stressful. Um, just like with the legs, I would use long, skinny, um, rectangular pieces. Think like an ace bandage or a cast, and you're gonna loop and loop and loop, overlapping the newspaper on the newspaper. I will say the hands are kind of annoying. Um, sort of like the head, you need a big enough piece that you can wrap all the way around and squeeze. You don't want it to look like your sculpture is carrying like a baseball mitt, so there requires a lot of squeezing and rewrapping. And just like with the head, if the first size doesn't go on well, the first size paper, just wrap it up and try it again until it naturally fits and sticks on there. You can touch this up later if you have a few stray pieces. I could have done this leg at any point that my boot or my um, stable leg was set and firm and my sculpture was balanced. For some reason, I saved it for last. Um, and so I'm just gonna repeat the same steps that I did on my first leg, but this time I'm going from my torso down. I wanna overlap my newspaper on top of my newspaper. That way I know that it's gonna stick. is always a challenge when creating art. Check that both of your feet on your figure sculpture are about the same size and the same like clunkiness. If you have a really clunky foot on your base, you might need to build up um, your other foot and just make sure they look like two feet that belong to the same person. On the final day, you are looking for touch-ups. Any texture area that you would like to smooth out, you can do with small little patches. You do have to make sure you use enough glue so that it sticks. And of course, you're gonna look for any area of silver or any area that you didn't paper mache the first time. You don't have to put a second layer on the whole thing, but any area that you don't like the texture of, or if you wanna build up and let's say you want your sculpture to be really muscly, or you want them to have more curves, you can build up different areas to give your sculpture more dimension and more shape. 
Any awkward folding of paper is easily covered up with a second layer of newspaper. Once you're done with all of your patches, you are going to put an entire layer of glue on the whole thing. I'm starting on my base and I'm noticing that I didn't do a great job folding over the edges. So I'm going to um, use some newspaper to make sure my boot or my balanced leg is nice and firm. And then I'm gonna fold over my edges like so. So I have a really clean, very um, thoughtful base. I'm just using my hands and my fingers to get the second or final layer of glue on the whole thing. If it becomes too heavy, you can always do the bottom half first and then maybe the next class period or in 10 minutes, you could do the rest. And the purpose of this is so the glue dries one last layer and there's no cracks in your newspaper and it's gonna dry really firm and it's going to look like a bronze or metal sculpture. So this last finishing layer really brings everything together before we paint these. Once the glue has dried, we're gonna use acrylic paint and a dry brush technique using metallic accent colors. Stay tuned. If you're an art teacher or interested in a lesson plan, visit my website, thatartteacher.com for a full explanation and lesson plan, along with a rubric, student examples, so that you can teach this in your classroom too.